Here's today's first word, Daily Devotion. October the 20th, Jeremiah 18. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. Now what a great note for us to begin to remind ourselves as we are continuing in the First Word Daily Devotion, as we're looking at the everyday Bible, as we're reading the Bible, what a privilege it is for us to be able to hear God's Word. And even though we may have the Word here before us, it's an important spiritual principle for us to remember that unless God reveals Himself to us, we cannot know Him. And of course, said Paul told the Corinthians, remember, the natural man can't attend to the things of God, for they are spiritually appraised. That is, God has to make himself known. And here again at verse 2, we have this confirmation. God says to Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. Oh, that God today would let us hear his word. So I went down to the potter's house. There he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. He reworked it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Now here we go. O house of Israel, can I not deal with you as the potter has done, declares the Lord? Behold, like the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I intend to do. And then at verse 17, we have this language of scattering again. Like the east wind, I will scatter them before the enemy. I will show them my back and not my face in the day of calamity. And let's look over at chapter 20, because at chapter 20, we're going to see the word of the Lord is going to cost. Now, Pashur, the priest, the son of Emur, uh, or excuse me, Emur, who was chief officer in the house of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesy in these things. Then Peshur beat Jeremiah the prophet, put him in the stocks that were in the upper Benjamin gate of the house of the Lord. The next day when Peshur released Jeremiah from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord does not call your name Peshur, but Terah on every side. And there's a Hebrew word there that's underneath that we can't see, and we don't even have an ESV footnote here. But that word Peshur There's a Hebrew play on his name here, Terah, and every side. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I'll make you a Terah to yourself and to all your friends, and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. And verse 6, Peshur, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity. To Babylon you shall go, and there you shall die, and there you shall be buried, and all of your friends to whom you have prophesied falsely. And then we have this poetic reference to remind us that the word of God cost. Oh, it's a pleasure for us to hear the word of the Lord, but for us to remember today that hearing the word of the Lord cost. Now remember this, as we encounter the word of God, we can either change our behavior and conform to God's word, and as we receive God's word in obedience and faith, or we can have our hearts hardened as we turn away from from the word of the Lord. But either way, the word of the Lord will have its effect. And here we have it, verse 7. O Lord, you've deceived me, and I was deceived. And this is Jeremiah reacting to the ministry that the Lord has called him to. You're stronger than I and have prevailed. I become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. And look at verse 9. Look at the honesty that's here. And this is one of these verses that preachers sometimes like to use to validate their preaching ministry. But it's not so, uh, it's not received with joy. These words, at least, are not mentioned in joy filled terms. Jeremiah is saying, God, you just won't let me alone. Look at what he says at verse 9. If I say I'll not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am weary with holding it in. I cannot. And so Jeremiah, of course, saying that he has a fire in his bones. And the fire that's in his bones is a fire of the word of the Lord. And of course, this verse, this chapter continues. And it ends on this very somber note. 
to remind us that sometimes serving the Lord is tough. Sometimes serving the Lord, standing with the word of the Lord, hearing the word of the Lord, well, sometimes it costs. Sometimes it hurts. Cursed be the day, Jeremiah says, on which I was born. The day when my mother bore me, let it not be blessed. Cursed is the man who brought me news from my, to my father. A son is born to you. Make him very glad. Let that man be like cities that the Lord overthrew without pity. Let him hear a cry in the morning and alarm at noon because he did not kill me in the womb. So my mother would have been my grave and her womb forever great. Now, let's stop there just for a minute and remind ourselves life begins in the womb. Life begins at the moment of conception. And even though this this is demonstrating Jeremiah's depressed state. Again, uh, the reference is so great because life begins in the womb. And verse 18, again, ends on this somber note. Why did I come out from the womb to see toil and sorrow and spend my days in shame? Again, that's to remind us that sometimes serving the Lord is tough. Sometimes having the word of the Lord is tough. But not having the word of the Lord not serving the Lord, well, that's tougher, and it costs more. And of course, we're introduced in our New Testament reading to Philemon. Philemon, there we have the characters listed out, and remember, it's not chapter 1, it's just the verses. So it's Philemon verses 1 through 3. We don't read the chapter because there's only one chapter. The same will be true when we get to Jude and 3 John, but we'll get there eventually. Let's close today's reading then. At Psalm 103, we'll just read the first four verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your mouth is renewed like the like the eagle's. And this is a good word for us, those of us who are serving the Lord, those of us who are walking with Christ, regardless of the way the world goes. Even old Jeremiah needs Psalm 103, and we need it today too. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses. And here again is this faithful God. And then let's close at verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Now here's the verse for us today. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. Oh, and thank God that in his remembering, he is compassionate.